welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, but what I do know is I've got neighbours on the roof, two doors over banging that way, and I've got the neighbour that side who thinks he's 15 and he's playing his music at full blast, so I really hope it's not being picked up on the camera because my camera is super sensitive. Oh, it's been a bit of a day of it already, folks. However, you will know from the thumbnail and from the description that this film is about these coloured rain individual pigments or shadows. Now these are the last um, of the items that I bought in January from the voucher that I won from Jamie from Panic Antics uh, and where I've had so many other um, palettes and stuff to review I'm only just getting round to these, that's the sugar pill ones that I've already done so if you want to see just exactly how well these pigments perform and what they're called then my friend you are in exactly the right place. Here comes the tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, little word of warning. There may be a little bit of banging because the house, two doors down, is having part of their roof redone. However, I need to get stuff filmed, so if you do hear faint banging, just try and block it out for me, please, and just concentrate on, concentrate on my voice, listen to my voice. Right, um, I will have told you in the intro what I'm using, no doubt, and <clears throat> it is the final thing from my January I won a competition. Um, purchases where if you haven't seen that film I'll try and remember to link it but uh, Jamie from Panic Antics did a competition on her channel I won yay uh, it was meant to be for a, either a Sephora or an Ultra voucher and I'm like mm, I really hate to be a pain but I'm in the UK they don't ship here any chance you could do Beauty List or Beauty Bay it's meant to be for 50 bucks Bless her heart, she put 50 quid into Beauty Bay for me. Um, so in January I bought um, Sugar Peel, Coloured Rain, and the Lunatic Cosmetics. I think that was all that I bought. Pretty sure that was all I bought. I'm pretending that I'm living over a discotheque. Oh, that shows my age. Over a club. Right, I have very quickly swatched those on the back of my hand, as you can see, they're beautiful. And they are Lemon Drop, Happy Days, spelt D-A-Z-E, Downtown, which makes me want to sing at you again, and Flashing Lights. Okay. Um, <clears throat> As regular viewers know, I'm going to be zooming you in while I'm talking and taking these swatches off the back of my hand. I wonder if I can use that one as a... I might try using... I might try using that... What was it? Happy Days. I might try using that as a mat. Because with shimmers, if you use them with a buffing brush rather than a packing brush... You can actually sort of almost buff away all the shimmer and just leave the base colour. You do tend to get quite a bit of fallout, but I haven't done my foundation yet, so. Right, so housekeeping while <laughs> look at that. Housekeeping while I zoom in. Uh, my channel is aimed at all skill levels from beginner to expert. So I talk you through every single stage, every single step, do both eyes on camera. Um, and because of my chronic pain, I don't always um, blend that quickly 
If you don't like that, please feel free to use the speed widget on YouTube. Um, don't moan at me because I'm not going quickly enough for you. Okay, we got that one. Marvellous. Now, I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people can mistake for hooded eyes because we get a lot of the same issues that people with hooded eyes have. When I look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have a hooded lid. <clears throat> if your static lid here covers half or all of your mobile lid, then you have what's known as either a full or a half hooded eye or a mono or an Asian eye. Now, the reason that people with deep set eyes very often get confused is because if I cover up my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in. So we get a lot of the same problems. We get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid. When we cut our crease, we can't just do a nice little pretty half moon following the shape of our eyeball. Um, and glitters, even with a glitter glue, end up flaking off halfway through the day. On my lids, I have got Tarte Shape Tape in 8B Porcelain Beige, which, as you can see from the fact it creased, I haven't set it yet. Now, if you've got hooded eyes, you can still follow my tutorial. Get yourself a brush like this, either a flat top brush or a pencil brush. With your eye open, just sketch out where you need your crease to be. Now obviously that will reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So whatever size brush I'm using, just use the next size down. Um, because whatever the head size of the brush is, that's how far it's going to blend out. Okay, so just... Just be mindful of that and just, a lot of it is um, trial and error. Find out what works for you. Best thing about makeup is if it doesn't go right, you can take it off and start again. Right, so I'm going to start off with this yellow. And I'm packing that onto my brush, as you can see. I'm going to tap off into my colour switch, but I tend to, I prefer to use a, um, a clean washcloth to change the colour on the brushes, but I use my colour switch to tap off into because then it stops getting powder everywhere. So, I'm going to start off by, wow, because I haven't set my base yet, I'm just going to tap this on. And bring it across. So I'm tapping to blend. And every so often I'm relaxing my brows to make sure I can still see it here. I'm literally just patting this into place because if you try and blend on a non-set base, that's when you're going to get skipping and patchiness. But because I wanted these to look as oomphy as possible, it's a technical term, oomphy, um, I didn't want to set the base. Okay, so now this bit of base is actually set because it's got the yellow on it. I'm going to very, very gently just buff over all of this just to make sure I've got it all even all the way across without any patching or loose pigment that's going to fall down during the day. And I also want to just soften that edge up just a little bit there just so it's not quite as harsh an edge there. Oh, this brush, by the way, is a Morphe M321. And it's great for 
detail work like this. Yes, that's pretty. I like that. And now I'm going to do... <coughs> Sorry, hay fever started already this year. And now I'm going to do exactly the same this side. But because I'm blind in this eye, I can actually shut the eye to show you what I'm doing. Which might make it a bit easier for you to see. So I'm literally just patting the pigment on. And then gently working along the crease, just by patting the pigment. And keep checking that it's visible above my crease line there. Obviously, you may need to use a slightly smaller brush if you've had to move your crease up. But this is actually quite a good one because if you use the side of the brush, you get quite a wide blend. But it does come up quite small at the tip, so you can actually just use the tip of it. Uh, it's actually one of the better Morphe brushes. I have got a Morphe code, but it's not mine. I'll explain. If you type Adopt Love when you order from Morphe, you still get the 10% discount, but they give the money to an animal charity, animal rescue charity. And you know what? I'd rather do that than fill these multi-millionaire's pockets up. Always sit back and check you've got the same kind of shape. You can see I need to come up a little bit this side. Because your eyes aren't even. And sometimes you have to do slightly different shaping to get them to look the same. Right now, let's go back in and blend this one. So, again, little circular movements all the way across. What this does is it gently moves the skin on your eyelid without stretching it because I'm holding the brush right at the very end. So I put as little pressure on my skin as possible. I'm just fluffing those edges out just a little bit. Just to soften them. Now I do have super, super deep creasing just here. That's from when I was five years old and the optician pulled my eye around at the ophthalmic. So I do have to gently go in and just stretch that lid out, otherwise I get striping. But for, for this eye, the circular movement works just fine. So if the circular movement works fine for you, do not pull your eye around or you will end up with super deep creasing like what I have got. And you will not like it, I can assure you. Because it only gets worse as the years go on. I just want to soften this top edge just a little bit more on this side. Just kind of flicking the colour off onto the non-set base, just to... Yes, I like that. I am going to try Happy Days, D-A-Z-E, to blend this beautiful yellow out. It's one of the, one of the nicest yellows, actually. Now I'm expecting an awful lot of fallout with this because obviously it's a shimmer and I'm putting it like a matte. But if you put the pigment on and then blend it as you would do a matte rather than packing it on like you would do when, it, when you want it as, to be a shimmer, you you tend to sort of brush the the shimmery pigments out almost leaving the base colour behind which does mean you will get a lot of fallout and it can look very patchy until you're finished so trust the process be patient I'm going to ever so slightly overlap this with the yellow now you can see I've got creasing here and here which my eyes do not like taking colour at that point so I'm probably going to have to fight to get it to adhere. But again, I'm using the same, because we still haven't set this top bit yet, I'm just patting the pigment on and blending across. Just by patting, very, very lightly. Just 
So you can see the pigment actually goes on beautifully. It's just the um, creasing at the other end that's giving me the issue. And I am overlapping it with the yellow ever so slightly to blend the two colours together. And obviously I'm going to take it up a little bit higher, this side. I always try and leave a bit of a gap, particularly if I'm using a shimmer near the top of my lid. Um, because I like my brow highlight to have a bit of pomph, and if you've taken shimmer right the way up, you tend to lose the effect. Right, so now I've packed the pigment on. I'm just going to, again, very lightly, very gently, Again, I'm using the side of the brush. If you have moved your uh, crease up, you might want to use the tip of the brush or use something more like this. This one is the Morphe M562. So I'm just really carefully, little circular movements, just to blend that into the yellow and to soften the edges of the peach. Just going in with a little bit of extra pigment on this top corner because the creasing does make it difficult for pigment to sit there. So I do tend to pick up just a little bit extra when I'm blending this top corner. This is looking very, very pretty so far. I do like this a lot. Very spring-like. You can see now where we softened the edge of the yellow and we overlapped the peach with it. You've got a nice gentle blend where you can't really see where one colour finishes and the next one starts. And that's the result I'm wanting today. I don't want a a blunt editorial stripe look. I want to blend the colours together so there's like a seamless transition between the two. So again I'm patting on, slightly overlapping with the yellow all the way across. A little bit of buffing at this point. Yes. And then one of the awkward bits, this top corner. How's your day been, by the way? I feel so rude. I haven't asked you yet. I've just got straight down to business. I hope you had a good day. Or if you watch me at the start of your day, to gently ease your way into all the jobs you've got in front of you today. Good morning. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your day and that it will continue in the same manner right through to the end of your day. Again, sitting back, just making sure that the shapes match now I'm just going to lightly buff a little bit more where the two colours meet just to make sure we've got a lovely seamless blend there. I like that a lot. Right, I'm using my, coloured, my washcloth to uh, take the colour off of this brush. Do you know what? I might even use this for the third colour as well. You can do a whole look just with two brushes, basically. I mean, if you were doing an all matte look, you could use this brush and do everything. Uh, it's quite a versatile brush, that's why I quite like it. Right, so I'm going to go into downtown. Things will be quick. Sorry. It's the Welsh in me, I can't help it. Right, now this again is a shimmer. So I'm expecting fallout. I got much less fallout from that happy days than I was expecting. So I'm probably going to get a crap ton from this. And again, crap ton is a technical term. 
So we're going to start off just by pressing this in the outside corner of our eye on our mobile lid. Or if you've had to create a mobile lid, you go up as high as you need to to meet wherever you popped your crease colour. This is such a beautiful copper. And again, I'm just going to do a little tiny bit of blending just to knock some of that brilliance down a little bit. Now I can't see a thing right now because of my eye being shut, but I'm relying on muscle memory. I'm hoping I'm still on camera. Oh yeah, look at that. Right, I think you can see that has reduced some of the shine just a little bit. And then I'm going to run this through my crease. Now because it's going sort of almost on top of the yellow, I don't need to worry about pat 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 pat. I can just start sweeping with this. So I'm very gently buffing all the way across to the middle here. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do a halo eye or a normal. I haven't done a halo eye for quite a while actually. I might do one of those for you. So to do that you then pop a little bit of the pigment on the inner corner. Do the same thing, gently buff, I do have to close my eye for this bit, like I said I'm not going to move and I'm just going to hope that I'm still in camera, still in focus and that I'm not blending this too far. Oh look at that, muscle memories, marvellous. Of course if you do blend too far you can always cut it with um, some concealer beforehand if you need to. Just picking up a little tiny bit of that pigment and I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to very gently soften that line across the top there. I don't want to puff it out too much. I do want to just soften it a little bit. Now remember, if you're using a darker colour, whatever you're using for that dark colour recedes and brighter colours come forward. That's why it's always a good idea to put a deeper colour through your crease, especially if you had to create a new crease, because it will give the illusion of the eye disappearing back more. Okay. <clears throat> so again, just very, very light buffing all the way along. Like so. These pigments are beautiful. Can't wait to play my birthday present because hubby got me um, Coloured Rain's uh, Safari palette. It was originally going to be anniversary present, but then Jeffrey released Blue Blood. So. Um, because my anniversary is the middle of April, hubby let me have blue blood early. I've already got a couple of tutorials up with that if you want to go and have a look. So I shall be having Cold Rain's Safari for my birthday in May. So you can see I've just popped that on, giving a bit of a blend, just like I did this side. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna mark how far out I want the pigment to come so it matches this side. And I'm gonna very very gently stretch that lid out because the problem that I have with shimmers with this deep creasing here is that if I don't do this it tends to sort of skim across the top of the creases and then all through the day I'll get full out. So unfortunately I do have to do this. Do not do this as I said before unless you have to otherwise you will 
stretch your eye out you will get really deep creasing and I promise you it only gets worse. Right. And then just link the two together like so. Gently going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. I'm holding it closer to the front now for accuracy. But when it's time to blend, I'm going back to the end of the brush so that I don't put very much pressure on it at all. <clears throat> Just gonna have a quick drink. So, a bit of buffing of that beautiful downtown. Such a lovely copper. This would be, this would be awesome in the autumn. This would go beautifully with the um, Full Fusion palette from Blush Tribe, if you manage to get hold of that. I'm hoping she's going to bring that back this autumn, so that people who missed it last time round will be able to get hold of it, because it is a really beautiful palette. Okay. Mmm, I like this a lot. Right, just cleaning that brush off. Oh, now great, now the other side puts their radio on. Like the world doesn't want me to film today and I've got to get a couple of films done as well so that's a little bit frustrating to say the least can you hear that I really hope you can't otherwise I'm going to get a bloody copyright strike I don't mind I'm not even blooming um, I'm not even monetized yet I think I might cut that just to show you how I do it. I'm just going to get a little bit of shape tape. This is an acrylic nail art brush that I picked up cheap from eBay. I'm just going to whack that roughly in the area that I need and then blink a couple of times. And that shows me how high up, and you can see I actually have to go up above the copper. But that's okay, because it's going to be tucked back in my lid anyway. This is what I was saying about having deep set eyes, you do get the same issues as people with hooded lids do. I'm just going to flip it over to the side that hasn't got any pigment on, any concealer on and just pat that over because that will then lift up any excess concealer that could mix in with the pigment when I put it on. Now I like to do one eye at a time because I like the concealer to be super sticky. So let me grab a Nice. This is a Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro. It's actually a spot concealer brush. But it's great for packing onto the lid. And I'm going to go into, was it Crystal Lights, was it? I think I better check that out into that. No, nope, Flashing Lights. It wasn't quite right. Now, if you're going onto a wet base like I am here, you shouldn't need to wet your shimmer. You should just be able to press it onto the lid gently pack that colour on as you can see that's going on really nicely I need to get a smaller thing here so I can see what I'm doing I've just got a little mirror here just so I can see a little bit closer up what I'm doing. If I end up having to put music under me talking, it's because their radio is too loud and it's being picked up. I'm just going to grab that uh, M321 again. Pick up a little more of the downtown because I did kind of overshoot a little bit and just go back over 
the edge. Where I overshot. And just pack that crisp that um, beautiful coppery shade. Back on top. Like so. That's such a pretty look. Good lord, I do like this. This is so pretty. Right. Getting my nail art brush again. I picked up a set of these from eBay for about <clears throat> four or five quid. And this is number 12, which I'm guessing means it's 12 millimetres across. So I'm literally just picking up some of the concealer from the brush, whacking it roughly in the area that I want, making sure it's quite thick at the edges here. And then blink a couple of times and it shows you just how high you need to go to cut your crease. So if you're finding crease cutting or spotlight eyes difficult to do, this is a foolproof method because this will show you what shape you need to do for your eye. Now, because I've got deep set eyes, I'm not overly worried that the, the copper is lower than the area that I've cut. If you've had to create yourself a crease, you might want to just bring the copper up over the top. But this is all going to be tucked back away in my crease anyway. So I'm not overly worried at present. As you can see that just disappears back into my crease. <clears throat> this clean cream off of the nail art brush which I always do. I always clean creams off of brushes straight away um, because then, if I want to use it again tomorrow, it hasn't gone chunky and horrible before I do my weekly deep clean of them. It also makes the deep clean a damn sight easy, I tell you. So, back with this Chic Pro Royal & Langnickel Spot Concealer Brush. Back into flashing lights. And just pressing that onto the wet concealer base that we just put down. Okay. It really is that simple. I know some beauty gurus say, oh, you know, this is quite a complicated thing to do. No, it's not. It's not complicated at all. It's really, really easy. <clears throat> The biggest thing is having the confidence in yourself to do it. Once you've got that confidence and you use that trick about blinking so that the concealer goes up, you'll be absolutely fine. Again, I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of that downtown just to tidy that edge up a little bit. And just That is super pretty. Right, I am going to go off camera and put some foundation and everything on. And I'll be back to finish off this under eye. See you instantly. I'm back. Right. <clears throat> now, what colours do I want to put underneath my eye? I obviously want to use that yellow, that goes without saying. Um, but what other colours do I want to use? Right, I'm going to get this flat top brush. This was from uh, a small Morphe set, EYE e Slay, I Slay, 
uh, from Christmas 2017. I know I used two Morphe brushes. I'm not a Morphe shill, I promise you. Everything I own, I've either bought myself or it's been a birthday or Christmas present. Um, I'm going to go into downtown with this flat top brush. I'm just going to kind of connect that top colour. Because of hay fever, I'm trying to avoid eyeliners at the moment because they just end up. My, it, my eyes just run so much with hay fever that I. There's no point. <laughs> there really is no point. Just ends up ruining my makeup look because I'm sort of. Trying to get used to seeing myself without. Um, winged eyeliner because that was always my thing. My look was always winged eyeliner, bright red lippy. That was my two staple looks, always. Always bright red lippy, always winged eyeliner. Usually with no eyeshadow, just the winged eyeliner. I was a simple child. I say child, I was in my 20s and 30s. Yeah, the last sort of the last three years my collection has kind of grown a lot. Started off with Jeffrey's lipsticks because he did um, he released I'm Royalty, which was the perfect purple that I'd been looking for. And then I discovered all of his other coloured lipsticks, so I just went mad on the coloured lipstick phase. Um, but the last couple of years I've been getting more into doing, you know more complicated eye looks. So, all these bright coloured lipsticks I've got and I tend to wear nudes most of the time because of the eye look being so pow. Although I do occasionally do a pow lip with a pow eye. <clears throat> right, this is a the Tarte brush that came in with the Graveyard Girl palette, Swamp Queen. Just a nice, it's still flat top but it's a bit chunkier. And I like that because it's great for just buffing out under the eye and I'm using that lemon drop again just to kind of mirror the top lid I'm not going to smoke it too far down today but this does go to show you you can do a smoky eye even with brighter colours Gone are the days when a smoky eye was either browns or black and silver. Although I do still like a good black and silver smoky eye, I will admit. But I do tend to just go for slightly more colourful looks now. There. That is super pretty. Now, I need to put some highlight on. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Jeffrey's sarcophagus. Absolutely adore this. This is the perfect champagne orange, uh, cha champagne orange, champagne gold, if you are pale and neutral to cool like me. But this also works beautifully on deeper skin. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who's like an NC45 and this looks stunning on her. Really does. I like to just bring the brightness along. Just that first little bit there. I just find my eye shape that really helps to open it up. And I'm just going to pop a little bit under my brow, under the tail of my brow. Just makes the eye look brighter and lighter and therefore younger, apparently. I don't know. I just think it looks pretty. Right. 
I'm going to go off camera and finish chucking shiny stuff on my face. Um, do my mascara and some lippy and I'll be back. Everyone knows how to do mascara, you don't need to see me do that. Ta da! I'm back. Right, just so you know what else I've got on my face. Number 7 Hydroluminous in Porcelain, fast turning into my favourite, favourite uh, foundation. Under my eyes, I have a combination of Revolution Conceal and Define Peach Colour Corrector and the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer in Swan. Really? Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer. This Aldi Lacura blush in gold blush, which is a dupe for um, NARS Orgasm. So it's that peach with a little bit of a gold mica in it. Lippy is Jeffrey Androgyny, but the bullet version. Um, because I've noticed with hay fever, my lips are starting to dry out. They do this at the beginning and the end. So I'm kind of avoiding liquid lipsticks at the moment because, you know, why, why make your life harder than you need to? So, Jeffrey's Androgyny Bullet Lipstick in the... I think he's now added this to his main range. You can get it in the pink. But I've still got it in the uh, limited edition red from a couple of Christmases ago. Was this? I think this might have been 2017 Christmas. I'm not sure. Um... Powder was Coty Air Spun Translucent Extra Coverage. Mascara is Catrice Glamondol Volume Mascara Waterproof. Brows are L'Oreal Brow Artist in Cool Brunette. That's about it. Okay, so final wrap up. I wish they bloody well wrap up. I tell you, what do I think of these? Do you know what? I love these, and I can't wait to get my hands on that Safari palette. Um, these blended out beautifully together. There's a lot of pigment in them. Um, I mean, you could see I used these two sort of satin shimmers as mattes, and I still got an awesome finish you know I, I used the the peachy one to blend out there I used the copper through my crease to create the halo eye really really stunning um, so yeah I, I just can't wait to get my hands on the other one. Oh, setting spray was slay or day watermelon uh, codes in the description box um, all my discount codes are in my description box uh, there's only two of my discount codes that I own commission from. One is Gerard Cosmetics, one is Oh My Glitter OMG. All the rest are non-affiliated. And as I said, the Morphe one, the money goes through to an animal rescue charity. So, I really hope you enjoyed... Oh, you know I've got sarcophagus, just look at the... the can you... can you... My Tin Man aesthetic bright enough to dazzle the gods so they can't see what I'm up to tick could stand on beachy head with a torch to warn ships of the rocks if the lighthouse is there a lighthouse at beachy head? probably not tick <laughs> right okay this is quite enough I've still got to film the intro with them playing their music like they're a 15 year old and them banging on the roof over there so <laughs> Oh, this is great fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below which of these four colours that I put on are your favourite. And would you have done the look like this or would you have done something different? Um, don't forget to check that you are still subscribed because YouTube do keep deleting people. 
as always check out some other films check out the beauty youtuber growth group and now all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.